Hello everyone, and welcome to the next installment of the EV Craft Business Let's Play Tutorial Pack. Uh, you'll notice a lot has changed. Uh, unfortunately, I actually recorded two Let's Play episodes before I realized there's a problem with my microphone. Um, so basically, in those two episodes, there's basically an hour's worth of video where you can't hear me no matter how hard you try. Now, uh, because in those videos we actually explained a fair amount, I'm not going to put those online, and instead I'm just going to kind of give you a summary of exactly what I did. Um, and there's two new mods that I've actually broken into. One is Mine Factory Reloaded, which uh, there's these two machines here within this dense brush. Um, the first one here is a harvester, which actually is an automated machine to actually cut all this down. And the other item over here is a smudge boiler, which effectively takes the, um, the byproduct that happens with this machine um, that would fill up here, um, and it basically converts it into usable, uh, buildable blocks, so like dirt, clay, uh, cobblestone, whatever. The main reason why I'm doing this is because I need a lot of clay and I don't want to have to spend the rest of my life uh, out in the world searching for it. So this is a way to automatically get clay. And now you'll notice these machines aren't actually working right now. That's because they're not powered. Um, I just basically wanted to kind of show you how it operates. <clears throat> so basically what will happen is Immediately, and here the, uh, the leaves are starting to be broken, the tree broken, and we've got our, uh, we've got everything that is actually catching sapling or whatever uh, going into our chest. Now you'll also notice I have an effect on me. This is actually coming from the small boiler over here. It has an effect that whenever it's active, not just powered, but when it actually has sludge it's processing, it will actually poison you and so, it's a good idea to usually keep the smoke boiler away from uh, wherever your working space is going to be. Uh, the way I have it right now is just simply uh, a, a convenient spot for me. Uh, normally, I don't leave this running at the moment because my dinky little uh, generator here just does not have the uh, power generation to really keep the, all these machines afloat uh, as well as allowing me to do my macerations, my furnacings. And uh, the start of my uh, my Applied Energistics Network, which is actually over here, which I will explain next. So we're not going to actually do too much with this. I'm going to close this off for now. We will get back into Mine Factory Reloaded uh, a little bit later on. I just basically wanted you to see what, uh, what that does. And uh, it's actually an optional thing right now if you're kind of following your build along with how I've been building my stuff up. That component is actually unnecessary uh, for you in order to do what I'm doing right now. The whole purpose of getting the extra, uh, the extra clay is simply because it will make my life easier when we move on to our stage after this. Um, so now we're going to look at the Applied ed Energistics Network. Um, I haven't done too much yet. I set up a bat box that is going to be designated just for powering this stuff. Uh, this is just so I can uh, keep my network alive a little bit more until I have my power generations under control, which is actually going to be uh, happening very soon. Um, there's a few items here. This is a pattern encoder. There's really not much you need to know about it, but I did make one. Uh, the pattern is available in NEI. Uh, so I'll just kind of show you what it is now. Um, basically, it's it's very simplistic stuff. Um, everything that's in here, you know, you can just basically use any item to craft it all. I'm not going to reshow it to you. Um, but these other items here, this is an ME controller. And I'll actually power this up so you can actually see this stuff in operation. The ME controller is basically your uh, your core CPU of your network, if you want to think of it like a computer. Uh, what it does is it basically lets you know, A, that your network is powered, and it also lets you know your uh, power usage, as well as all the items that are connected in your network. Uh, so right now, we are using 5 EU a tick just to keep these basic machines running. So that's actually a lot of power, considering my generator 
only does 10 EU a tick and it's burning fuel at an alarming rate to, keep, to maintain that. So this is an ME drive. Um, this, if you will, is basically a storage device for your hard drives. Now with the uh, Applied Energistics Network, or the AE Network, I'm going to call it from now on, uh, what it does is it takes tangible items, so like cobblestone, dirt, any kind of thing that you can put in your inventory, and it converts it into digital data. So the item basically gets destroyed and gets digitized. You know, think of like a Star Trek and a replicator type of thing. Um, what these drives do, these little hard drives in here, they actually are storing your inventory. So right now, you see that I'm using about a quarter of my disk space in my storage unit and 23 out of 63 individual types of things I can store. Now the number of bytes used I think varies from item to item, um, but basically it's an indication of you know, effectively how much you're storing. The types is individual um, types of items. So if you say had cobblestone, dirt, and uh, and wood, and oak wood in your inventory and that was it, you might be able to, if that's all you stored, you could effectively fill up your disk to use, you know, say 4096 bytes total, but it would only have three of 63 types being used because you only have three distinct types of items in the drive. Um, on the flip side, you can only put 63 individual types of items, so even if you put one of each type of item in there, that would max you out, despite the fact that this could actually take a lot more of those 63 items. So, just to show you, this is a crafting terminal, which is another thing I created. This allows me to access my inventory, which is in that drive. And, uh, as you can see, I've put a lot of my items in here. I have... Uh, ah... All right, so um, as you can see, the uh, you know I've got some uh, products you have probably haven't seen before: conversion matrix, the advanced processors, all these kinds of things. The recipes again are available in NEI, and uh, you'll see me using them a lot more frequently, so you'll get used to them. Um, now here is actually a crafting station, so I can actually take. Uh, my items and actually make them. So say I wanted to make a crafting table, I could actually just do this. And I could pull my crafting table out. So th the nice thing about this is as I add more drives, I can dump my entire inventory it, and in this one terminal access everything in one area. Um, and then with NEI it gets even easier. So then if uh, say I want to make a, a tank, which is actually uh, just a bunch of glass. If I hold shift down and hit question mark, it fills that up for me. So I can actually quickly grab anything I need out of here and I don't have to go hunting through chests trying to see where I kept my iron or where I kept this or that. That is why um, I haven't really worked on any kind of low-end storage area over here and why you see me running around uh, just willy-nilly putting stuff in chests just simply because once we get to this stage none of that matters anymore and I just don't want to waste the time or energy on it. Now what we are going to do next is actually start uh, uh, build our uh, we're going to start building our automated crafting system. It's actually uh, called a containment uh, and a, oh, hold on one sec. Okay, I have slapped myself silly so now I actually am capable of talking again. Uh, it's actually called uh, ME Assembler uh, it can actually be almost any size, but it has to be at minimum 3x3 three three in size. I have made just enough assembler containment walls to make this happen. Um, it, it's not a 3x3 three three of just these blocks, but uh, I'm just going to show you the basic design. So now what you're going to see is uh, on the exits, like on all the outside walls here, I'm going to have to put in another block which I will craft shortly called a heating vent. Uh, those are going to go uh, both, uh, you know, anywhere the uh, in the middle of these things that uh, is on the outside wall. So if I say made this larger, like say if I made this 4x4, four four, we would actually have 
a few heating vents in the middle here we'd have to put in on all sides top and bottom on the inside you actually get to customize a little there's two blocks one called a crafting CPU and one called a pattern provider uh, both of those basically add functionality to your assembler if you have more crafting CPUs in there your stuff will craft faster whereas at more pattern providers you can actually store more different things that the thing is capable of crafting uh, we will eventually want to expand both but we're just going to do the bare minimum for now because that will be more than enough for us to get our crafting system operational and then we can use this system to quickly build our blocks to be able to expand so first we are going to create a crafting CPU if I'm going a little fast for you, I apologize. Um, I will uh, explain it all in a further tutorial if you guys make a comment saying you didn't really understand what I was doing and I will uh, re-explain uh, re basically everything from start to finish with ME and according to the system. Uh, okay, so the, we've got the crafting CPU, now we need a pattern provider. six heating vents all together. Now I don't have, uh, we're actually going to need more iron to make this happen. So we need to make some iron bars. I'm actually just going to go ahead and continue to do it in here. If you hit this little X button, as it explains, it basically will clear this out and put any items in here back in your uh, ME storage area. So there we go, it just puts that back and we are now going to put in six iron bars and we are going to make some iron bars. Now one thing you will notice is I will take these out and the pattern is still there. That's because it initially draws from your reserve inventory and then uh, and only if it doesn't have the items in here it will take from whatever's in here so we're gonna need more of these bars so we got 32 uh, that should be enough to uh, to make what we need so then we'll put these bars in here and then we will go back to the heat vent pattern pull that in and now we can start making heat vents so now you'll notice I'm out of iron up here, so if I take stuff out again, it's going to take the iron that's in the, uh, the pattern there. Now the way you put the pattern providers or the crafting CPU in the middle doesn't matter, it just has to be in the middle. So actually, what's going to wind up happening is because we can only put one block in the middle here, uh, we're actually going to just put the pattern provider in. The uh, assembly containment system actually has uh, a minimum uh, crafting CPU with, if you will, of I believe two units. So actually, by just putting this all together with just the cra with just the pattern provider, we will still get some power out of it. I'll bet it won't be as strong as if we were actually putting crafting CPUs in there, but that will still be sufficient for us for the short term. It's not a waste of materials because we are going to be expanding our assembler pretty quickly. 
so I just have to put this aside for now. I figured as much. All right. In order to make more cables, we need more flexic dust, which again is made from uh, the two types of quartz dust as well as some redstone. Uh, and I'm saying again as if you actually have seen my tutorials, which I actually had to uh, scrap because of the sound. So that's how you make flexic dust. and we have an actual, we have a molecular assembler chamber which really uh, is going to get us moving a lot faster with both our crafting and being able to move forward with the mods. It does need to be powered, uh, but we can just power it simply by attaching it to our network here. Uh, it's going to start using a lot more energy. Well, we're up to 5.5 EU now, so now our generator is spending half of its time when it's actually running just powering this thing. Um, so I'm actually going to turn this off for now, so I'm not draining energy I don't really have until uh, I explain the patterns to you. Now the way the um, the assembler works is you have to basically initially create the recipes for it to be able to function with. Uh, this is simply because there's uh, so much complexity in Minecraft, especially with all these mods. Uh, it gives you the flexibility to kind of set things up the way you want. So what we are going to do is, first step, we are going to actually set this to create a crafting monitor for us, which uh, is one more device. You can see from there that uh, that we need to build. Now, one of the nice things about this is that if you shift click into this, it will actually uh, put in the pattern for you. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like right now it's derping a little for me, like it's putting in the grade in system. I'm going to have to look into exactly why it's doing that, but uh, if it's done properly, I'm not sure why it's only broken, but when it works, uh, it will actually fill in the items even if you don't actually have them. So what I'm actually going to do, just because I, I don't really want to uh, waste the one pattern I have on the crafting monitor, I'm actually going to um, have it happen here in applied and logistics. So we create our crafting monitor and I will actually replace this cable with it. Uh, one of the nice things about applied energistics is the fact that it actually transfers power from machine to machine. Um, so right now um, everything's kind of all linked together just right next to each other. You can use the cables to spread things out if you want, but we're a little constricted on space, so you know this works perfectly for me. The crafting monitor, um, 
you don't see anything right now, but it basically lets you know how the auto crafting is going. It lets you know if it's stalled, what the progress is on everything. Uh, so now we're actually going to go ahead and uh, we're going to create a recipe. Now the first thing that I'm I need is we actually need to start generating more power. So we are going to go to my mid-tier power source, which are solar panels, which are right here. Now solar panels require uh, three coal dust, uh, s some glass, some electronic circuits, and a generator. Now this is more than just one component, um, so we're actually going to need multiple patterns. So for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the pattern for the electronic circuit simply because of the fact uh, I have all the materials actually available for me. So I have not transferred everything over to uh, Applied Energy 6 yet, as you've seen, but as I move stuff over, it's actually going to uh, become a lot easier to handle all this. All right, I need redstone, which I actually think I have moved everything over, and an iron plate. Oops. So we'll take some redstone. Alright, now this does not consume your items, it's just being used as a template placeholder. So if I only had one copper cable, that would actually work here. I just need one of each item. So the electronic circuit pops in, I hit encode, and this pops down, and now it says, alright, you have an electronic circuit uh, pattern available. You know, do what you will with it. So to use it, we right click on our molecular assembly chamber, we put our pattern in there, and now if we go into our crafting terminal here, you will see there's an option for electronic circuit. Now if I actually had any electronic circuits, it would actually show a number here and I could pull them out, but because I don't, it has the option to craft. So I'm going to go in here and I know we're going to need two circuits for one uh, solar array, so I'm going to click uh, choose that I want to create two electronic circuits and hit begin. Now we are not going to have the materials to create this electronic circuit and the crafting monitor is going to tell us. So it's here telling me, oh well if you want to create an electronic circuit, right now I'm missing an iron plate and I'm missing six copper cable. So now at this point we can actually go and create those items specifically for the uh, for the interface. Now eventually we'll be able to teach the interface how to make those materials itself, but because we're just getting started, we're going to give it a little bit of a hand. While we're doing this, we should actually create some more charcoal. out of power with the applied energistic system so what's going to wind up happening is when the network goes down typically uh, anything that's being uh, set to be crafted it forgets that queue. All the items still remain that it's crafted so far but you'll have to retell it to you know craft the electronic circuits for example but that's not a huge concern for us for now I mean that'll only take two seconds tell it get the charcoal running again. I believe I have some more logs somewhere. Ironically, they might actually be in my Applied Energistics Network. There's some here too. But that's primarily the reason that I have the bat box. I just let it run for too long without realizing it was uh, out of energy. Uh, but with the bat box, if I happen to, to run out of energy here, I have enough time, because this holds 40,000 EU, and uh, we only use 5.5 uh, a tick right now in this network, so it would give me, you know, at least 20, 30 minutes, if that, maybe, maybe a little less, um, before I would actually run out. I'm sure someone can do the math for me and, and figure that out. Alright. Oops. 
Now, do note I did have the six copper cable before, but because we're making two sets of electronic circuits, I'm actually going to need 12 altogether, which is why I'm doing this. We have enough iron plates and we have enough redstone, so we actually have enough to make our two electronic circuits. So we're just going to go and we are going to dump everything into here. And, uh, oh, actually, I guess uh, with one of the later updates, it actually remembers it now. Whether or not it's actually going to do them is another story. It, I know this version is being discontinued simply because it, it can get a little buggy like this. Um, ultimately, it still works fine. All we'll have to do is cancel the recipe. So we just shift, left click on it, and it poofs away and sets to craft again. Um, I wasn't even expecting that to still be there when we ran out of power, so I'm not too upset. So we say we want to create two. And it is still being derpy on me. That might be um, maybe the. I usually build these four by four to start, but when I uh, I didn't have the materials to build it, and uh, when I looked at their wiki, it said three by three is enough. They might be lying to me. So what I am going to do is actually go and harvest the materials, get this to a four by four grid, and uh, then we'll actually get this. Uh, done because I'm thinking it's not crafting right now simply because of the fact it uh, doesn't have crafting CPU in here. Alright, I'll be back. Alright, I am back and I've expanded this a little. It's not 4x4, four four, it's actually 4x3. I expanded it just enough to get that uh, crafting CPU we crafted into there. Uh, so now we are actually going to go and make these electronic circuits. And there we go, the crafting uh, system is complete. We now have our electronic circuits. And uh, I know you're like, wow, that was absolutely amazing. It took you 10 minutes longer to make it than if you had just done it in a crafting table. Well, this is only the start. Um, the next step is we are going to uh, create more, uh, more blank templates to put in here. And as we get each item that's required and the solar panels done, we'll be able to set the system up to consistently keep crafting solar panels till we have the power amounts that we need. Uh, that's going to happen in the next uh, the next episode. So uh, for now, I'm going to sign off. Again, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them in the uh, YouTube chat or on our forums at ecraft.com. Uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel, uh, like us, post us on Facebook, do whatever you want. Let people know that uh, I'm doing these. And uh, we'll see you again. Thank you.